The story of Sealand continues where legal battles with the UK would barely touch the surface. Let's dig deeper to unravel this wacky story and if you haven't already, pop over to part 1 where the link is in the description. Welcome to Take a Seat, the channel dedicated to extraordinary people and fascinating historical events. You can help the channel grow by liking, subscribing and commenting. This was created primarily based on the James Grimwoman Report, Sealand, Haven Co and the Rule of Law. We left off with Sealand Prime Minister Alexander Ackenbach petitioning for citizenship of Sealand as a legal defence. Although it failed, he certainly wasn't deterred. A coup d'etat In August of 1978, Ackenbach invited Roy Bates to Austria with the purpose of connecting him to investors. On the 10th of August, Roy and his wife Joan did just that, leaving Sealand to go to Austria with Michael, Roy's 26-year-old son, staying aboard. Ackenbach's lawyer, Gernot Putz, led a group of men by helicopter, tricking Michael by saying a deal had been struck to transfer Sealand, authenticating it with a forged telegram. Once Putz landed, Michael went to get a celebratory whiskey. Putz, however, locked the door behind Michael, essentially taking him hostage. A few days later, Michael was released on a fishing boat headed to the Netherlands. After everything so far, Roy and Michael were not going to give up and launched their own helicopter assault at dawn on the 15th of August 1978. This would prove successful. Putz and two Dutchmen would be locked up and as any nation would, all three were put on trial. The Dutchmen pled guilty and were released, while Putz, a Sealand passport holder, was charged with treason and Bates claimed that he considered execution. Instead, a fine was issued of 75,000 German marks, which would be 140,000 in 2023, and until it was paid, Putz was made to wash loose and make coffee. News was made public a couple of weeks after the assaults where the Dutch government asked their British counterpart if a patrol vessel passing by would help the situation, but by this point the Dutchmen were freed. The German government, however, were faced with one of its citizens, Gernot Putz, imprisoned and took further action. They sent a helicopter to check up on him, where it was said he was well and happy. Putz may well have been happy, but the German embassy wasn't reaching out to Britain who argued that they couldn't do anything as it was out of their jurisdiction. Gernot Putz was finally freed on the 28th of September and both British and German governments just saw the whole affair as a publicity stunt. Sealand shenanigans Once the Bates monarchy was restored, they turned to pirate radio again but the post office radio enforcement group identified Roy Bates' voice. They traced the transmissions to his South End flat which they raided and confiscated the equipment. Joan Bates protested to the press, stating Sealand's equipment was instrumental in rescuing fishermen or yachtsmen at sea, but Roy pled guilty and paid a £250 fine. Ironically, this was why Bates was applying for a legal licence that the post office was willing to give, but in fear that this would be a form of recognition of Sealand's sovereignty, the Foreign Commonwealth Office objected. In the 1980s, things would not go to plan for Sealand. A bid for Radio Galaxy to transmit was placed, but this didn't get off the ground. In 1987, potential for a TV station was on the cards, but their US partner, Wallace Kemper, was wanted in the States and was arrested in the UK. In the same year, Michael Bates, the son, bought radio equipment to retransmit other stations but he reversed the decision when the UK expanded its territorial waters from 3 miles to 12. The official statement of Sealand was that as a sovereign nation, the British expansion did not matter, while the UK government did not make it clear their position of property rights of the tower. International issues Conflicts would not surpass for Bates and Sealand, as in 1990, Roy shot at the Royal Marines auxiliary vessel Goldeneye. This would be investigated by police, which according to Roy was simply an instant of warning shots and there were no arrests made. Although unsubstantiated, Roy Bates claims further attacks happened from Belgian mercenaries, German and Dutch vessels and even a US helicopter. 
In 1999, following an eventful few decades, Roy's health began to wane, where he would settle in Spain for retirement. Michael was appointed Prince Regent, but the family left Sealand in 2000, where Michael started a business in Essex called Fruits of the Sea, harvesting sea fern and cockles. It was in 2000 that Spanish authorities broke up an international crime syndicate who claimed to represent Sealand and was selling fake documents through the web. The ringleader, Federico Trujillo Ruiz, a former civil guard, was working with criminals in Germany, Austria, Cyprus, Italy, Armenia, Russia, Chile, the US, Canada and China. Police raided a bingo hall in Madrid, presented as a Sealand embassy and seized blank passports which were being issued by German neo-Nazis. They also found documents related to money laundering and drug trafficking by Russians and Iraqis. None of the Bates family were found to be involved and denounced any criminal activity using Sealand. Tragedy was strike Sealand in 2006 when a fire broke out. Only one person, a security guard, was on the platform who could not put out the flames and had to be helicoptered to hospital following smoke inhalation. A mix of government and private firefighters attended Sealand, where the blaze was eventually extinguished by a tugboat. The damage was estimated at half a million pounds and was repaired by November 2006. Legacy Prince Paddy Roy Bates died at the age of 91 on 9th of October 2012. He left Sealand to the Prince Regent, his son Michael, and now Head of State of the Micronation. Sealand continues to claim its sovereignty within the world. Their website tells a short version of their history, nuggets of information such as their national dish, which is spaghetti, and offers you to be a Sealand Lord or Lady, not that it means much. The Principality of Sealand made history as it warded off its competitors, survived coups, and even the full force of the UK government, a legacy which still sits today, tall and strong, in the Thames estuary. Thanks for taking a seat. Links to resources are in the description below. Please consider liking, sharing and subscribing, and why not comment to tell me what event you'd like to hear about next. Thanks again, and hope to see you very soon.